Yeah. I'm going to play my harp while we're waiting. Okay, and we just went live, so go ahead and play your harp and let's begin. Yeah. Hear me? Yeah. So I thought I'd just play the harp a little bit just to set the tone. Thank you, brother. Hello, welcome everybody. This is Neil with Portal to Ascension. I'm joined here with Peter Sterling. Uh, we had Peter on a few weeks ago, so it was really amazing to have him back on. Really weirdly, my internet went off right at one o'clock, right when I'm supposed to start. Internet never goes out. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Actually, I am. So I'm going to say something happened. <laughs> but it's so because of that, I can't be live on my computer engaging with you at this moment. So I'm going to be on the phone connecting with you and I have some announcements, but I'm gonna make the announcements towards the end, hopefully when my internet's back up today. But today's presentation is again, we're joined with Peter Sterling and it's a deeper exploration, I would say, into um, some of his research. It's called Explorations into the Harmonic Code 333. And a little bit about the event and then we'll just get right into it. Today, you're gonna to join master harpist, composer and visual artist, Peter Sterling, as he shares insights as revealed to him from his angelic guides into harmonic codes and patterns of the higher dimensions. Peter will show over 150 images that show striking correlations between Incan temple geometries, the pyramids of Egypt, and the geology of Sedona. Visually stunning and spiritually inspiring, Portals of Light will give you a new and fresh perspective on age old questions and concepts, as well as tools to assist you to navigate your path of ascension to the new 5D world. Peter, thank you for being here, brother. It's all thank yours. You. Thank you. Now I'm, I'm gonna be able to screen share, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, Go ahead. So how do I do? Okay, I do that down at the bottom here. I gotcha. Well, I'll just talk for a few minutes before I do that. And, um, welcome, everybody. I'm wondering um, how many people were here before who saw my last presentation. Um, but um, I touched on the 333 code, and this is something that was revealed to me right around 2012 at the, um, the end of the Mayan calendar time. And um, it just started to, to appear to me and I started to perceive something going on. And at the time also, I was having a very strong uh, connection and a download from my angels because I've been working with the angels for many years. And when I came back to Sedona in 2012 with my son and his mother, um, uh, I received uh, my next mission. And it was to bring through some visual art that had within it patterns and uh, geometries that open up multidimensionally, like holograms. And these I call crystal alchemy portals of light. I'm going to show you a little bit how this happened to me. But there was this very strong circuit of, of energy and communication that happened to me when I came back to Sedona in 2012. And every I've lived here now five times. And every time I come here, it's, it's pretty much a life-changing event. There's, it, it's such a great place to channel and receive uh, you know, um, inspiration here and light that um, I went through quite a powerful experience with this, this, this most recent time coming back. Um, so, and it was, also, what I was beginning to see was the 333, and it was appearing everywhere I was looking. I was seeing it more and more, and I was so intrigued by this. Um, and so I'm going to show you some images, and we can take a look at this together. So let me do the screen sharing. And um, let me see here. Share that. And I uh, hope that's good. I'm going to close this. Going to open up my photos. Yeah, I'm going to start here. 
can you hear me okay, Neil? See everything good? Hope you can. Yes, it's all coming out good. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna give a little bit of a refresher here for those who weren't at my previous um, presentation. This is where I live in Sedona. This is a great shot of Boynton Canyon and I've received, this is where I really heard the angels sing for the first time and where I had a series of near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, shamanic death experiences, where I was taken up into the light. And I was shown many vistas of the heavenly realms, of the angelic realms, and uh, was ultimately taken to a place where I saw the luminous sphere of golden light. And, um, you know, this was really when my life changed dramatically. And I received my mission to channel the angels' music. This was the main place I went, where I saw the luminous sphere of light and the multitudes of angels singing the heavenly music and praises to uh, the source of all love and light in the universe. And then the, the cherubs appeared to me very much like that. And then one angel in particular started to channel the music through me on the harp. And I'll just show this picture again. This is in Peru. And this is where I also on this trip where I, I saw some dramatic 333 codes uh, engraved into the temple stones, which I will show you. But here I was playing my harp for the, uh, the very humble uh, Quechua Indians here on the island of Amantani in Lake Titicaca. And uh, my angels, you know, I traveled with a harp all through Peru. And I heard the message, play your harp for these people and call in some angels into their home which I did, my friend took this picture, and then a moment later, this angel appeared in the room. Now, um, also to make this connection with the circuit, this is the main meditation that I was doing, working with the teachings of the ascended masters and the I am presence, the magical presence. And this, you can see uh, Mount Shasta and Grand Tetons here on the left and the right, which are the abode of the ascended masters who have the lodges of the Great White Brotherhood uh, inside deep underground in these mountains where ascended masters meet uh, in their sacred chambers there. But this was really the visualization and the, the diagram that I was given to use very simply. And this represents ourselves down here on earth, but opening that central channel, going up through the top of the head, and then ultimately uniting with your, your I am presence. And really my, my experience is that you could, you could relate to this as being your fifth dimensional light body, your fifth dimensional self, which is in the higher plane, a higher frequency. And it's a radiant being of light. And we have this connection. This is also known as kind of the silver cord, but also in the yoga tradition, this would be called Shashumna, the central channel. So when, you know, the opening of the seventh seal, which is prophesized in the, in the Bible, uh, which perhaps is happening collectively right now, and we can collectively open the crown chakra and ascend and unite with our higher selves, our divine selves, our I am presence. And what's cool about that is all these, this is also known as the rainbow light body, and you'll notice in um, a lot of the religious art and ancient art, it shows saints and different people. They have a halo of rainbow light around them. And you see this in the depictions of Christ quite a bit in the uh, classical paintings. Uh, but these are all of your good works through all, all of your lifetimes. You have collected an abundance of good karma, of good works. And the more you do, the brighter this rainbow light around you is. But what's cool is once you make this union with this higher self, this I am presence, so in your meditation, opening your third eye, opening your heart, you can see here's the heart open, very important, connecting with the golden light, this halo of golden light around the upper chakras, and then going up the central channel and unifying with your divine self, your higher self, or your I am presence, or your Christ self. And when you do that, then you get access to all of this information here. All of this good karma is waiting for you. These are like your treasures in heaven. So, you know, this is like uh, the inner alchemy 
of uh, having union with your, your inner self, your Christ self within. So this is what happened to me. And then when I did this, then, you know, my music came to me because this music I do with the harp is not just from recent times, but it's, it's something that I've developed over many lifetimes. So, so when I had that initiatory experience of, you know, connecting with my divine self, being out of my body and going into the light and having this experience, then so many more of my gifts came. So let's, let's keep going here. Um, here's some images of my stained glass. So when I was six years old, I'm telling you this backstory just because it's all fits together in pieces because it is a journey. It's a magical journey. We are all on. And we can see bits and pieces of our own story and others' stories. So, so I've been making these stained glass windows since I was a teenager. When I was six years old, I had a vision. My, my mother took me into uh, the Sunday service at an Episcopal church in California uh, when I was six, instead of going to Sunday school. And I was taken into the main uh, chapel uh, at this beautiful church with beautiful stained glass windows around uh, with the depictions of the different stages of the cross or the life of Christ. And I was sitting between my, my mother and her best friend and I was listening to the music and the, the liturgy that was in Latin. And you know there was this high Episcopal ceremony ritual going on with holy water and magical words and incantations. And then the light moved in and came through the stained glass where these beams of colored light came down and kind of spilled across the floor in the sanctuary up by the altar where in front of where we were sitting, I saw this and I was so captivated by the beauty of this colorful rainbow light coming in. And as I was looking at it, as I remember it, my, my spirit left my body and I was taken up into the light and I traveled through the stained glass window. And then I went into the golden light. That's about all I can remember. And I, I came back and uh, tapped on my mother. And I said, hey, when I, when I get older, I want to be a stained glass window maker. And uh, you know, she, she tapped me on the shoulders and that's nice. And, and it was years later, about 10 years later as a teenager where I just stuck through synchronicity uh, discovered stained glass and it came into my life again and I've been doing it ever since so this is one of my pieces this is one that I made in in Sedona back in the early 90s and I had a small art studio I was waking up in the middle of the night two or three in the morning and um, I was told to get ready to receive a transmission so I got up turned on the light went to my drafting table with a piece of paper and I work with a compass and a ruler. The ruler is the masculine linear and the feminine is the circular, right? With the compass so that, so you have masculine, feminine, yin and yang as I design these. And this, this design came through uh, within about 15, 20 minutes, I made this pattern and then I put it up on my wall. And the next two days later, I got a knock on the door. And somebody came, they heard about me, and they came to my art studio and they said, um, uh, I heard about you, I'm interested in your glass. They came into my studio, they looked up, saw this drawing of this pattern. And they said, that was in my dream two nights ago. And that was the night where I received it across the top. And then the wings coming out here and the talons are grabbing a quartz crystal in a pyramid and the horizon line, and this is kind of going into eternity. Some years later, I came across the book by Norma Milanovic, who uh, was a famous channel of the Arcturian. She wrote a book called We the Arcturians. And as I was reading it, she, in the channeling, she described a royal Arcturian crest. And there she described it as being an eagle with a golden crown and a red sun. And here's the red sun. It was exactly of what I had received. So. It's been quite amazing. So I've been channeling this stuff for a long time. Here's some of my other pieces. This one here has a Mayan kind of a 
stylistic with the Mayan glyphs, Mayan star signs. through a few of these. And then these are my dream stones. There was a period of time when I couldn't make my stained glass windows and I was going through a challenging time in my life in the late 90s. I was actually living with my mother and I, I was uh, playing the harp. <laughs> I went through a difficult time. I was broke. I got my car repossessed and I was depressed and I was really struggling. And I thought about dousing my harp with gasoline and throwing it off the cliffs in Santa Barbara into the Pacific Ocean in a ball of flames because I was so upset about some things that were going on. But I wasn't able to do my, my stained glass. So I was living with my mother in her little trailer in Ojai. I began to paint these beach rocks where I would wander the beaches in Malibu and Ventura and find these rounded rocks. And then I started painting these designs on them. And they're called starflower dreamstones. And you can see there's like the angels here with the wings. Here's like the body and these green wings coming down. And it shows like the angels are all merged into oneness. This is that central point of light, the zero point of light and the angels flying into it. You can see. Now, so this is when I came back to Sedona in 2012, uh, I rented a house in Uptown with beautiful views out of all sides of this house. It was amazing, it was a hilltop house. And I set up my art studio and I began to make glass again. And this was the first piece that I made coming back this time. And, and when it was finished, I, I hung it into the uh, window here. And this was later in the year around December, as I remember it, and the sun's fairly low in the sky. So it was coming under the eave there and shining right directly in to uh, some beautiful quartz pyramids that uh, I, I put into the template of the window. That's what's unique about my glass is I, I inlay a crystals and gemstones into the template of the stained glass, which is very unique. Never seen anybody else do that. And, but then the sun came through and this blaze of light started shining through all of the crystals at once. Uh, there's four quartz pyramids and a cut star of course, in the center. And just this firelight, this intense golden firelight began to come through the stained glass. And then it, an image was projected. Now, when I moved into the house, I was guided to take this gold plated pyramid and create kind of a vortex altar space in the built-in bookshelf. So I built this first. I was just following my inner guidance by the angels to create this thing with uh, some gemstones, a piece of apophyllite right here, which is, is an angelic stone, and then some selenite hanging down here, and then a large quartz uh, sword here, a tall quartz uh, point. Okay, then I was waiting and waiting, waiting, wondering, you know, why did they have me do this thing? It's, it's quite intense in our living room, wondering what's going to happen. And, um, and so, um, then when I hung the glass window, then the light came through and a rainbow angel appeared on the wall. Excuse me. And it began to move across the wall and my son, Micah was one and a half at the time. And here we can see this beautiful rainbow angel moving across the bookshelf and the wall and we were just transfixed by it and as the days went on every day it would come at the same time and as the angle of the sun would change it began to change too and you can see here it really began to fan out with these glorious uh, rainbow wings across uh, the ceiling of the house and i was i was really captivated by it i was like what what is this i i understood that this was a visitation was occurring and so I really just began to look at, look at the color and the high frequency of light coming through quartz crystals in that stained glass. So really amplified by quartz. And you can see just the beautiful uh, color, uh, the high harmonic color of this angel. Okay, then I started to receive messages that there was some information coming through. 
And uh, then it started to move across the, the hallway wall here. And look at this, look at him. I was just like, wow, isn't this the coolest thing? I had never seen a light phenomena in my house like that through one of my stained glass windows. It was quite dramatic. So then I started to hold up different crystals into the light. And I was remembering that I had heard that there was encoded information in quartz crystals that came from Atlantis. Perhaps some of you are familiar with this story. And, um, and so I was always kind of curious about that. But then I was thinking perhaps maybe there is some way to access this information with this high frequency ultraviolet luminescent light coming through. And as I held the crystals up and then the reflection on the wall, I began to see things through the, uh, you know, the reflection on the wall of the light coming through the crystal. So just showing you some of these. And it was very interesting. It was almost like I was seeing a being with a head here, maybe arms coming down a body. And I was like, what kind of a being is this? Am I seeing something? Then I tried a different one here, holding it this way. And then this angel appeared, you can see here. So here's like the head and here's the two arms reaching out. Here's a wing going back kind of flying like Superman, a winged kind of flying being. And you can actually see kind of a nose on there. And I was very intrigued by this, trying some other stones to see what could come through. I'm just gonna go through this rather fast, but some very interesting images. Then, then I started to look through these optical quartz crystals I have. I'll show you one. These came into my life a year or two before. And you can see here, this is uh, one of them. This is the highest quality quartz available. It's called optical quartz. And there's no more optical quartz coming out of the ground. It's all been mined a long time ago. So it's very rare. So what I was doing is I was looking through the quartz crystal because when you look through optical quartz, there's, there's no distortion. But I started to put a crystal like this of the optical in front of my camera lens and seeing if I could peer in through the different spectrums of light and see anything. And I was getting some very interesting images. You can see I had some uh, glass spheres on the uh, living room table uh, as a decoration. And I started to photograph them with the quartz. Uh, and then catching the reflection the next thing I tried was uh, catching the reflection of the light coming through my stained glass and the quartz crystals within it. And I thought this was very interesting because as this angel appeared in the room, I was told that I was gonna be making uh, some sort of art, some sort of new art and uh, something that could be duplicated and mass produced and some like art on canvas. So I'm not a painter. I tried painting with canvas and maybe even making my mandalas kind of contemporary with brushes and paints, but it wasn't right. And, and so then I started to follow the trail of these, the light coming through. So these were some of the reflections I was catching of the uh, sunlight coming through my stained glass windows, which I thought was very cool. And I was kind of following my way down this path, just showing you some of the, the images and textures of light. Then I, I went to uh, some cut gems that I have, like uh, here's one here. And this is a cut uh, morganite gem. It's a beautiful stone. It's got a pink hue, all very fancy cut. And I had a similar one, a citrine or an amethyst. And I put that to the camera lens and started uh, taking pictures and things started to appear in that. I thought that was very interesting. And uh, this is kind of the next series. Then what happened, I got the message to use my iPad and within the iPad was a kaleidoscopic effect. So I started to photograph my stained glass windows, the mandalas of the sacred geometries with my iPad's kaleidoscopic effect. And then these images started to appear. I thought that was very cool. 
And that was really the start of, of my crystal alchemy portals of light. This one's cool. You can see here how like a little Kachina spirits appearing here in the, in the quartz crystals. Okay, I'm gonna come out of here now. Just take a look here if there's anything more I'm gonna show you. Just showing you, uh, oh, let me just show you a little bit of this. Then I started to see there were uh, ascended masters. I recognize this guy here. You can see him. I received the name, the, the great seal of Shambhala for this piece. And here I saw this, this person here kind of wearing a, a white coat and maybe a robe of some sort. And I saw kind of white shoes with the toes curled up and hands outstretched. And then you can see coming up from this being out the crown chakra is like the angelic higher self. Because a lot of the information coming through these templates is about the higher circuitry of the higher chakras uh, outside the body, the five higher chakras that will connect us with our I am presence, our Christ self, our higher self, and our fifth dimensional light body and all the codings that are uh, stored there waiting for us to be activated. So I saw that guy, then I, I, I started looking at pictures of ascended masters and sure enough, I, I saw this because I'm seeing him here. And then I think this is Serapis Bay. So ascended masters started to appear in my paintings, there he is again, Serapis Bay. I'd like to have a, a headdress like that with a jewel in it. Maybe this Halloween, that'd be cool. And then the cherubs started to appear. You can see here, here they are flying around, the little cherubs and their little bodies. And they started to appear in my paintings spontaneously. And they're the ones that showed me how to access them. So they had told me that the, these crystal alchemy portals of light are the, like the visual representations of my music. And you know, on many of the journeys I went to on my near-death experience, my shamanic journeys, I saw textures and forms like this in the interdimensional travels. And I'm sure some of you, if you've experienced maybe DMT or ayahuasca, you've seen perhaps different things like this as well. Okay. So I'm going to get out of this here and I'm going to shift us over here now. Let's see if there's anything more in here now. We're going to pass that. Okay, I'm going to jump over to here now. 333. Three, three. So I really started to see this 333 three, three pattern appear. Here is a image of a this is an office building in Sedona. And my son's mother had just rented an office for doing massage. And I saw on the building, you can see 333. So this is Native American motif, but we can see like three levels, three pyramids, and encoded in 333 there. Now that reminded me, of course, if you were at my last presentation, the uh, Sri Antra which is the Maha Mantra of them all in the Yantra, in the yantra Yoga tradition. Uh, yantra Yoga is using the, these symbols, these patterns to meditate on. And so this actually is, has 333 encoded in it, which I discovered. And when you look uh, and research Wikipedia about the Sri Yantra, you'll see that uh, scholars believe that um, this is a portal that can lead one beyond time and space. And it contains nine pyramids. You can see these pyramids in it. So you can see one there, and there's another one here, and another one here. And then there's three coming down. They say that there's nine pyramids in here. So that would be three sets of three. Okay. And also what's significant about this Sri Yantra is when you, when I was meditating on it, then I discovered that 
you can see off of this tip here that actually there's a spiral that spirals out of the center and it goes both ways. But actually notice here, no, it actually goes one way. You notice here that, look at this white space here and this white space here. They're not the same size. It, it looks like this one is a little bit bigger. So it's a little bit off angle in the center to show that it's to activate the spin. And you can, you can go into this. This is the, the Sri Yantra comes from the Rishis and it was a male sect of renunciates in India 5,000 years ago who received the yoga uh, teachings. Uh, Patanjali was part of this group. Um, and um, they also received the uh, Sanskrit language, the Hindu Sanskrit language along with uh, the yoga poses and they interrelate, but it's generally a masculine uh, sect. So these particular teachings of the Sri Yantra came through the masculine. And we can see this pattern, it's all straight lines, yeah? But it does have the spiral aspect to it coming out of the center. Here's another image of it. Okay, now, this was an image I took in Egypt in 2006 when I was able to get there and was invited to go and play my harp as part of a three week trip with 20 people to all the major sites. Now this one day I went by myself, we were staying over here in Cairo and I came up, I came up by myself and wandered through the park by myself and then head out across the desert and got up on this plateau over here and had this vista of pyramids. And what I, here's a, I love this one with the, the nomad down here on Camelback. Let's see if I can see. Okay, so this is a great shot here. So, and I saw this, I did not see this at the time. I took the picture. I saw this sometime uh, after 2012. And when I started to review these images again. But what you can see here again is the 333 encoded into the Great Pyramid Complex on Giza. And so you can see the three main pyramids. And um, I got to stand on top of this one here uh, at sunset. I had one of the military police. We, we rode on horseback across the desert at sunset, me and my girlfriend on Arabian horses led by this Bedouin guy with his long white kind of thing trailing off and galloping through. We came over here and then he connected me with the guard who I paid 20 bucks and he took me up to the top of this pyramid. It was a really amazing experience. But here we see the three main pyramids and then we see the three pyramids of the Queens. And then these three pyramids all have three levels. Okay, so I read that as three, three, and three uh, encoded. Okay. And then here at the uh, Hathor, no, this is the, the Horus Temple. And we had a private time at night for just our group, it was spectacular. But here you can see also that there's three sections. So here's the main entrance into the temple, the main gateway, entranceway. And we can see three sections on the stone facade here in the front and three here. And we can see how, notice this person is here, the size, and then coming here, Horus is even bigger. And then this guy over here is even a larger scale. And it repeats that on both sides. So they're showing us there's three levels. There's three levels of, of reality here. And you can actually see as you go into the temple, there's three rows of the colonnades. Here are these large, amazing pillars that when you stand at the base of them, they're just gigantic and they're all carved and painted with uh, hieroglyphics. So we can see once again, here's this motif of three levels of three going in to the Horus temple. And there you can see the large colonnades and then going into three levels deep back into the very final where the Holy of Holy is, the altar. 
So it's very symbolic. You're passing in through three levels. And then here, uh, this is um, near the Valley of the Kings. This is uh, outside of Queen Heshaput's temple. And I was intrigued by these dilapidated ruins here. And so what I discovered was that um, this is the Heshaput's temple. And, but here, um, we can see there were three sections, one, two, and then the third one has collapsed. But we can see this is a large one, this one's smaller, and then even the smaller one. So we see that progression of threes in this architecture as well, in this dilapidated ruin. Here's a close-up of it. So I was very intrigued by this. What am I seeing? What am I seeing here? Actually, no, this I discovered looking looking after some years later. And this is, this is Heshput's temple. And you can see it's built, there's three levels to this temple as well, or this memorial. Okay, now fast forward to 2009. I was part of a uh, group that went to travel to Peru, uh, shamanic journey for uh, I don't know, three weeks, I think it was, to Peru. And this is uh, at a town called Oye Totambo or something like, like that. Perhaps you've been there, it's in the sacred valley, Oye Totambo, I believe. And this one day I uh, went up, this is the temple of the sun, up on these, these beautiful ruins up on the side of the mountain. And um, I was up here by myself and I think I did a microdose of psilocybin. And I was listening to my music on a portable CD player I had with some headphones on. And I was up here by myself and I was really kind of having a cosmic experience, but I was, fascinated by what I was seeing here. And I began to see the 333 encoded in this. Now, notice here, there's one, two, three. Now notice the, the size, the height. This one, it goes higher and then higher. And then here it goes higher. And then on this final stone has three levels carved into it. So we have one, two, three, then one, two, three, and then one, two, three up in the corner. So once again, I was seeing the three, three, three carved into the temple of the sun of the Inca at Oye Totambo in the Sacred Valley. And um, what was interesting, right alongside of it was, was this motif, which we see very common carved into the rocks and the temples of the Inca. But because the three levels of reality with the Inca is very important and, and throughout Mesoamerica uh, with like the Aztec and the Mayans, uh, they too had a very similar, because those religious uh, uh, beliefs, those spiritual beliefs of the cosmology of the universe, uh, the three planes of existence, um, traveled all the way, of course, from South America, all the way up in, to North America here. Uh, and we can see that here, even in Northern Arizona, where uh, outside of Flagstaff is uh, a place called Wapatki. It's a state park and it's right next to Sunset Crater, but at Wapatki, which is an ancient Pueblo from a thousand years ago where several hundred people were living. Um, there's about 110 rooms or so in this ruin that's built on, on a mesa overlooking the valley. And then there's also two circular kivas, ceremonial kivas. And then down below is a ball court uh, like you see in Mexico and uh, throughout Central America and, and the lands of the Maya where they played the, the game, the ball game. Um, and so we have, a ball court here in Northern Arizona. It's the most Northern ball court ever found. 
is here right outside of Flagstaff. And right next to it, which is pretty cool, is a volcanic vent. So there's a hole in the ground where the wind comes from these deep volcanic tubes and tunnels that are underneath the desert there, because it's all very volcanic. So if you're ever in the region, in the area, make sure you stop into Wapaki State Park and go see the ruins there. You won't be disappointed. Okay, but here's Temple of the Sun. We can see the uh, three stones, six stones. So once again, we can see the progression in the height of these stones. Uh, hold on. So one, two, three, and then once again, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So three, three, three encoded. But here what I was seeing was this five level motif. So you can see one, two, three, or five, and that you don't see that very often. So as I was as I was looking at this, and I was kind of tripping out a little bit. I, oh shoot! Now, how did that happen? Come on, come back. Sorry about that. Oh my! No, that's not what I wanted to say. Something happened to my my photos. Just give me a second. There we go. Okay. So as I was looking at this, I was saying, here's the three, 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 and then they carved two five level pyramids here, which I had deciphered as meaning the three, three, three is a portal to the fifth dimension. Okay. Here's down below uh, the temple of the sun. And we can see here, this is the ritual bathing area where uh, the king and the queen would bathe here before they would go up uh, to the temple of the sun. And here you can see uh, the three levels here, very common motif, one, two, three. And then within the three, we can see three levels of three. So very much uh, here, here also in their terraces, this was a beautiful valley. I can't remember the name of it, but we can see the 333 is even encoded into their beautiful terraced fields where they would grow food and quinoa and things like that on these terraces. Quite amazing. Here I am doing the wind harp over the sacred valley of Peru. If you haven't been there, I highly recommend it. And I'm hoping to go back again sometime soon. Now here is uh, uh, the crop circle. So after Peru, then I had a series of very intense ET contact experiences. Uh, and I was guided to go to England to have a firsthand experience of the crop circles. And this was a crop circle my first year in 2009 that I, got to go in that first summer. I went for three, three summers in a row, uh, 2009, 10, and 11. And uh, going with groups and playing my harp and crystal bowls and doing sound activations in the crop circles. So this one here, we can, if you look at it, this one has the 333 encoded in it. So please, um, I wish I could get to my thingy. I want to enlarge this for you, but my control panel is down at the bottom. You can't do it. I wish I could pinch it. Oh, there we go. Good, I can pinch it. So look for the three, three, three. So here we can see one, two, three circles. And then there's one, two, three points here, and another three points here. So this is encoded with 333. Here's another one. We can see again, three levels of three in this crop circle. It's very common in particular time. So we can see, you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. And notice how they're going in there. They're always showing some sort of dimensional portal 
is the crop circles are encoded with information. Um, now here's another one that has 333 encoded in it. We can see there's nine uh, kind of elongated. Now notice here the way they did this. Look at this reflective side here. So this is actually almost like pyramidal. You can see there's the, the way they, the, the real crop circles. So you know the difference if you're following the crop circle phenomena now. Um, you will not see this. You will not see this subtle shading showing the other dimensions in the current crop circles. Uh, these are the true authentic circles. And you can see just the perfection of the lines. There's not a crooked line. It's very precise, almost like cut with a laser. Like when you go to Egypt and you, you view the, the hieroglyphics that are carved into the, um, you know, into the temple walls and to, in the obelisks at Luxor and Karnak, they are, it's like they were cut with a laser in this hard rock and they don't know how they did it, okay, how the ancient Egyptians carved these. So it's very similar to this, but they're very flawless. This is one of the true traits of a authentic crop circle. So let's see here, okay. So this was cool. So you've got nine here, and then you've got three sets of three lines going in here. But here, notice here on the side, what is this little glyph? Looks like a key, you see? So what are they telling us? Here, this pattern, this cymatic mandala harmonic pattern of the three, 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 harmonic with the nine, which is three threes, is a key. It's a key. It's a portal. Here's another one. Beautiful, beautiful crop circle from, I don't know, sometime around 2010. But once again, we can see three levels of three. And this one so beautifully displayed for us to contemplate. And to walk inside of these is, is quite amazing. It's very activating. Unfortunately, the current crop circles, I haven't looked lately, but over, since 2012, there's been very few true authentic crop circles is my belief and others that now they've been manly man-made and you can really see that in all the crooked lines. That's a key to true crop circles made by higher intelligence or off-planet intelligences, ETs, uh, have no crooked lines, they're flawless. That is a trait. And if you see crooked lines, uh, generally in, it's man-made. Man, man, man okay, here's another one. I got to go in this one too. Here we can see three levels of three. Isn't that awesome? Flawless, again, not a crooked line, just precise, precise, and it's super huge. Um, now here's another one. So, and of course, Here's three levels of three. This is a fractal. This is the mandible, mandible uh, fractal image. I think it's mandible, that's what they call it. So here we can see three, one, two, three. And this is all phi ratio, the relationship between the dimensions and size of these circles is phi, golden mean. We have three there and here on the side, one, two, three, one, two, three. So again, three, three, three encoded into this crop circle as well. Now, what was fascinating is I began to, from this hilltop house that I was living at the time in 2012, I had incredible views of the landscape. And I, be, I began to see 333 uh, in, in the landscape of Sedona. And this picture shows, you can see this line here, and then it repeats here. 
again. And then there's another one here. And see another, we'll see another um, see, see. Yeah. So we can see one, and two, and three. Three sections of time. Here's that without the snow. Okay, then I saw it again in another formation, this one here, looking up towards Schnabley Hill. And we can see one pyramid here, and then there's another one here, and then there's a, another one coming down here. So like three levels of time. Here we can see this repeating pattern. So Sedona really is showing some uh, kind of atomic structure on a macro level through the crystalline structure of the red rocks. But we can see this repeating pattern of threes here. And then here, looking up towards um, Wilson Mountain, and we can see these lines here. There's three lines, one, two, and three. So one, two, and three. So we're seeing these repeating lines and we can see how this one is pretty long, then it gets a little bit shorter and then shorter. This is re repetitive all through the Sedona landscape. Here we can see it, one, two, and three. Okay, and then looking at Thunder Mountain, this was from my, my, my patio deck. And what I saw here was that Thunder Mountain has three sections. So notice this, here's the main section, here's the middle section, and then here's the bottom section. And they're pretty close to being like phi ratio proportioned. But we can also see what's, what's fascinating is that with Thunder Mountain, we can see, here's this like, see this little thumb here. So actually, okay, so here's Chimney Rock, okay? And this is called Sugarloaf. And I'm just gonna show you these guys for a minute here. This is, we also call this guy the happy man. So you can see it's like a man laying on his back with his phallus sticking up and his mouth is open, he's happy. But right here, just across the valley is the woman. You see it's all rounded here. And then her head is here and she's, her arms going here. So we are made out of the same minerals, every mineral that's in the earth, we are kind of come from the earth. And so we can see a lot of human forms in the red rocks but everything is electromagnetic. There's a polarity to everything. And we can see that even being played out in the Sedona landscape. But here we see the three sections. So uh, notice this little thumb sticking up here, and then it repeats up here in this section. Here's another one. But this is a previous section that kind of through erosion over hundreds of millions of years, you can see this section moved out and was eroded, but still here's a little chimney. Here's the chimney rock, but here's another one starting up here. Here's another chimney and here's the third chimney up here. So you could just imagine time-lapse of these moving across and eroding over millions of years and showing this repetitive form. It's not interesting. Okay, and then what you can also see here is, so here we have like the three levels of five, these are very straight lines, like in the Sri Antra. But also here, coming off of Thunder Mountain, if you're ever hiking up here, you can see this one ridge, and it arcs and it curves in a perfect arc, like a curved arc, kind of phi ratio. So as we know from looking at some of my other stuff, you can see the relationship with um, the Sri Antra and the Flower of Life, because they overlay on top of each other. So here again, even on Thunder Mountain, we can see this beautiful arcing curved line and then the, the three sections coming down. And then I was driving across the highway and I was looking for it everywhere. This is on the way from Arizona to um, California, I believe. And, and then I saw this formation here and you can see even in this very old mountain range, there's three sections in it. And so here's the main section 
going down to a middle section and then like the smaller third section. I started to see this repetitive pattern. You can see here in front of this range, here's the main section, second section here, and then the third section trailing off. And then in front, there's three sections, one, two, and three. So very fascinated by that. <coughs> Um, let me just jump out of here for a second. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to jump out of that. And what do I want to show you? I'm going to go over here. I'm going to come down here. We're going to look at this again in this relationship. So I was talking about how the flower of life and the Sri Antra are connected. Now here is the, the pattern of the flower of life. And this is all made by circles. So just stare at this for a moment. These are all uh, concentric circles, interconnected circles. It's made by there's no straight lines in the flower of life pattern. So this is more magnetic energy. It's uh, feminine energy. But within this, we can see these pyramidal shapes. So if you follow these lines up and down, you can see there's pyramids all through it. If you just stare at it, you can start to see these pyramids emerging within the flower of life pattern. Here we go. Okay, so here we are, with the flower of life again. and how that relates to the Sri Antra. This is, what, what I'm showing here is one of the influences for me in my understandings of these things is coming into uh, awareness and understanding of the hermetic principles. So perhaps we've all heard of as above, so below. This is, the principle of correspondences. Okay, so so everything has a polarity. But we can see here with the Sri Antra form in 3D, which is called the vector equilibrium, when a light is shined down through it, then we see the flower of life pattern. So these two patterns of Sri Antra and Flower of Life are totally connected. They're like flip sides of a coin. One is electric and one is magnetic. And so one of the keys is to start to look for this. And you know, as we grow spiritually and expand our awareness and our sensitivities, and we start to expand our vision, and we start to peer behind the veil of this illusory re reality in which we live. Because all masters and great teachers have always told us that this world is nothing but a dream, that it's not the true reality, that it's basically illusory. There's a lot of illusion in this world, especially right now. Everywhere we look, we see illusion. And we can't, it's very difficult to know if what we're seeing is real or the truth. And uh, so there is a higher understanding here. So we need to um, extradite ourselves out of the matrix of 3D of polarity. 
and allow our awareness, our consciousness to rise to a new plane where we begin to see the interconnectedness of all things. Because in the quantum and the supernatural, beyond the limitations of our physical senses, everything is connected. There is a unified field of oneness that connects everything. So as we awaken spiritually and expand our vision and raise our vibration and do all our internal work to reconnect circuits and activate you know dormant regions in our brain and our nervous system and our neurocircuitry then we begin to vibrate at a higher rate because another one of the hermetic principles is everything is vibration so and our brain and one of the other uh, hermetic principles, the number one hermetic principle that comes from Hermes, the great teacher, Hermes Trismegistus, who was known as the Atlantean, and he was in Egypt, known as Toth, Toth, perhaps gave the geometries for building the pyramids. Um, that everything is vibration. So Oh, no, the number one principle in the hermetic teachings is that everything is mental. It's all in the mind. So as you begin to connect circuits in your brain and activate, activate your pineal and pituitary glands and turn on the higher functioning of your brain, then our perceptions begin to change. And then we begin, we be, begin to be able to see beyond the illusion of this reality of the 3D illusion, which is so characteristic, characterized by duality and polarity and more and more, more and more every day we are being squeezed at the same time being pulled apart with this great rift in our reality that we're even seeing playing out in our societies and our cultures is people are, generally we see there's a great division occurring in the world. We're not really seeing people coming together so much around the planet, at least in mainstream media. But we see there's greater and greater divisions. Uh, so the key, and I believe our mission is to escape and to get free of this three-dimensional, dualistic, polarized reality and make our ascension to a higher plane, a higher plane of consciousness, a higher plane of higher vibration, because it's all vibration and it's all in the mind. So patterns like this that we're looking at here at the Sri Antra and my stained glass windows even, um, have a way of affecting our brain waves and connecting circuits in our brain. And it's been well known for centuries and this is why they created these patterns and why monks and renunciants would meditate on these for long periods of time because they actually change our, our consciousness, they change our brainwave state. And we can begin to kind of entrain more into a theta state which is more of a kind of a dream time state of awareness. Um, and then we can access higher, we can use that as a portal. So even with the Sri Yantra here, which has the three, three encoded. And as I'm staring at it with you now, we can see it's just, there's threes, three groups of threes all throughout it. But it is believed that this is a, like a dream time portal beyond time and space. So time and space is characteristic of the 3D, the way that we relate to time and space. But when we access uh, fifth dimensional consciousness, our, our, we recalibrate to time differently and our orientation 
to 3D time changes. And we begin to tick and vibrate at a higher plane, which brings us into a new timing, more in alignment with true universal time or galactic time. So, let's see. So here again, we can see what a beautiful representation of how everything has two sides. So make sure you look for the two sides of all things and don't become polarized in your thinking or your vision because every story has a different angle. And ultimately we are looking to unify and bring things together. So um, Neil, maybe I could uh, take some questions here if there's any questions. Yeah, just um, yeah. open it up if anybody wants to ask a question or a comment in YouTube or on in the Zoom room, please do right now. We have a comment right here. Fascinating and propels me to explore more. Many synchronicities with many of my own interests and insights. Thank you. Mm, you're very welcome. I mean, you can see, like, even as I'm scrolling through, this is my main presentation that I did the other day. And, oh, here, let's look at this one. Here we can see the Temple of Saqqara. Here we can see the 333 encoded into this one, too. So notice... Uh, Here's the main entry. And you can see one, two, three lines, one, two, three. And then three sections here. And then I think there's three sections over here. There's just even a small one. Again, three, three, three. It's a dimensional portal. When you go to Egypt, if you've been or if you get to go sometime, you can see that you're actually, when you go into these major temple sites, that you're actually entering in through a dimensional portal. And you go into a more rarefied state of beingness when you're inside these sacred spaces because the stones and the architecture has encoded all through it these sacred proportions and these you know, multi-dimensional proportions are are encoded into the building of it. This was the whole point was to, was to uh, transport people to a new state of awareness coming into these sacred spaces. What would you say the number 333 constantly means as we are aware of this angelic presence? Well, now I will share with you another story about the 333. I am not sure if it's angelic. Now, I know that in numerology, like the 444, if you see 444 on the clock, uh, that means, or it, generally that is believed to mean the angels are with you at that time. So pay, pay close attention to that. For me, the 333 almost seems galactic. It seems almost kind of ET oriented because for me, the way, you know, what, what happened to me, I think I might have a picture down at the bottom. So my album here, Circles of Light, when I was going through the crop circles, and for those three years, I went for three years. Uh, and in this particular crop circle, I was sitting here in the middle with a group of people shortly after it was created. And I did a uh, I played the wind harp where I hold the wind up, the harp up in the wind, the wind plays the harp, and I recorded it with a diamond crystal ball, like a $3,000 crystal ball. And um, I made a CD out of it. But when I was in the mastering studio and putting it together back in LA, and I was editing all of my recordings to put into a single recording. Uh, I was told by the ETs that I was communing with at the time and the circle makers that the recording should be exactly 33 minutes, 
33 seconds and 33 one hundredths in length. And I was like, wow, what, what is that? You know, why is that? And I really didn't, this is when the 333 started coming because I had a direct communication from the ETs that to use this number and the length of the sound recording. So that really catapulted me into to understanding what this 333 is. And, and so this is a great album. I invite you all to come to my website, harpmagic.com. And I have all my music there. I've got 16 albums with sound samples of everything, but just come on over to um, uh, Harp Magic and have a listen to this wind harp recording because it has the three through three encoded. And I do believe a lot of my music does. That's why my music, because I play intuitively and from my heart, guided by the angels and the, these higher intelligences that guide me, because my mission to, with my music has always been to open portals through to the heavenly realms and allow to be a transport vehicle for souls to ascend into that heavenly vibration where the angels reside and the ascended masters and the beings of light, where they are in this illuminated state and living in, uh, in unification with one another in pure divine love and ecstasy and bliss. That's like the the characteristic feeling and vibration. So I've heard it said before that to make this transition into uh, the higher plan, into the higher dimensions for our ascension, to come into the fifth dimensional awareness and vibration, is to uh, to, to feel it. We are going to feel our way into it too. You know, as we bring our, our mind into focus and balance, then there's a vibration that overcomes us. And it's one of, of bliss and ecstasy. And this is our natural state. And this is what's drawing us to that. We just follow, the, follow our bliss and follow that vibration and keep feeling for that bliss ecstasy vibration. This will bring us home. This is, this is the call home, is to be in, you know, in oneness with divine love. So, and that's what my music has within it. So please come on over and take a look. I hope you can, can have a listen to that. Uh, let's see, anything else? Any other questions, Neil? No questions, kind of question slash comment. Yeah. Um, uh, Conrad is asking or is saying, could it relate to the three paths, left, right, and center? And then Aussie, Angie is saying, or the three past, um, the three, the past, the present, and the future. Of course, or the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the, or like the, you know, there's Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, and the Holy Child, you know, like there's always a trinity. And even what was interesting as I was listening to an audio book today uh, about uh, Hermes and the, uh, the Hermetic Principles. If you're on Audible, I've got a great book there. And I'll, I'll make this recommendation for you so that you can learn the Hermetic Principles if you are not aware of them. It is called the Kyb Kybalon. This is a very famous ancient book and it's spelled K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N. And the one I'm listening to on Audible, it's also in print, is by three initiates. It's an anonymous author of the Kaibalan by three initiates. It's a wonderful audio book where they go over these hermetic principles of the law of correspondence, the law of mentalism, the law of vibration, the law of polarity. This is where all the modern new age teachings have come from, like the book of the secret, you know, all of this stuff is, is comes originally from the hermetic principles. Because when you can master these principles and understand that it's all in the mind, then you can truly enter into mastership, new levels of mastership, right? So uh, let's see, what do I wanna show you? Just as a nice little kind of part, any other comments or anything, Neil? Just a lot of comments saying thank you um, and that they love this, someone says here, love the stained glass. So just a lot of comments of appreciation. Cool. Let me just to finish, I got just a few more minutes here just for fun. 
I'll show you a couple of cool photographs. Uh, let's see. So let me open this one. I don't know. If I, I think I might have shown this last time. This is just some fun because I know everybody's, you know, really into the ETs. Our good friend Alan Steinfeld is rocking it with his new book, Making Contact. But uh, this was two guys that I had out on a tour. I do, I do uh, Jeep tours here, Vortex tours, metaphysical tours in Sedona. My thing is called uh, Sedona Sacred Land Journeys. And there's a link on my website to that. But I had these two guys out on a Jeep tour. We were up on Airport Mesa. And uh, we were just sitting on these rocks and we were talking about our contact experiences because they too had been ET contacts. And I took this picture with their phone. And uh, then uh, the next day, uh, they, they emailed me this picture and said, look what we found above our head. And so I changed the contrast a little bit and something begins to appear above them, above Courthouse Rock. You can see it here. And let me finally go here. And then when I really adjusted the contrast, you can, you can see without a doubt that there is a spacecraft directly above Courthouse Rock that was hiding up in the clouds. And you can actually see, because uh, the sun, this was a cloudy day, sun was up here someplace, but you can kind of see the classic saucer shape. And this top edge has a little bit of ray of light on it, like the sun's reflecting off it. And here's the classic dome in the center. And we, I had just been talking about my ET contact with the Zetas that happened in 2009, which led me on my whole trip to go to the crop circles. And uh, now it is believed if you know Bashar, uh, the channel Bashar. Bashar says that his Zeta Reticulin mother ship is parked over Bell Rock now. In 2012, it relocated from Machu Picchu and reloaded, relocated to over Bell Rock, which is just adjacent to Courthouse here. But I think for this purpose, because I'm connected with the Zetas as well, they were listening in on our conversation. And then they made an appearance just for us so that we could have a very special picture of them directly over their heads with Courthouse Rock. Isn't that phenomenal? Uh, I'll show you another picture I, uh, that came my way. And uh, this was from some clients of mine uh, who were staying at Sunset Chateau and uh, over here by Airport Mesa and looking across on a perfectly clear day. And then all of a sudden, one little cloud appears over Thunder Mountain. And we can see here as we get a little closer, we adjust the contrast a little bit and say, wow, look at that. Something is really appearing there. Look at that over Thunder Mountain. And then finally, I have a nice emergent here. Um, I believe that's a craft of some sort over Thunder Mountain. Now, another couple fun shots here. These were um, a friend of mine from Sedona who was, he was on a pilgrimage in Tibet. Uh, so, yeah. And he was walking around Mount Kailash. This is the, uh, the, the pilgrimage path around Mount Kailash, which is over here. Mount Kailash is the uh, heavenly abode of uh, uh, Shiva. And Shiva sits on the top of Mount Kailash with his uh, divine consort smoking ganja and making love all day long, tantric union on the top of Mount Kailash. That's what the gods do. They, they smoke ganja and have sex, of course. Um, now here we can see in the valley, we can see this light ship here that appeared in one of his photos, my friend took. Beautiful. This is not a physical craft. This is a, uh, an ultra dimensional. This is, could be Arcturian. Uh, it's just full of light. It's, it's a beautiful starship, light ship. Here's two more. 
you can see with a, a little waterfall coming in. He said there were a total of three ships that he saw. But look, look at that. That's not a lens flare from a camera. Uh, lens flares don't look like that. I think there should be one more picture. I guess I'll take this. Okay. So anyway, just, uh, you know, it connects me to, I'm going to stop screen sharing here. Okay. Did you do that? Yeah, that was me. All right. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Back to the question. Uh, I guess for me, the 444 is more of harmonic with the uh, angels. And then the 333, I think is, is um, to me, it vibrates more and reminds me and connects me more to kind of ET consciousness. Um, through this, these patterns that we are just observing. So I hope this information, you enjoyed it. Uh, just let it, let it seep in, let it uh, kind of uh, settle into your awareness and perhaps even tonight in your dreams, pay attention uh, to your dream time experience tonight. Perhaps something will happen there for you. And just always, uh, being open, expanding the vision to see beyond the veil of the illusion of 3D and come into that unif unified state of awareness, uh, that fifth dimensional state in the unified field of oneness, where we can all come together and have the, uh, the disillusion of opposites. And we can see the one truth together that there's one God, there's one love, and there's one light. And we are all a part, all of humanity, all of God's creation is all connected to this one light that lives deep within our heart and soul. And we are being called home at this time to come into this, this realization, this God realization together. And we will cross the threshold uh, into the golden age. Um, I believe we're very close and uh, exciting times ahead. So keep your heart open, keep your eyes to the skies and share the blessing. So sending my love to all of you. Thank you so much. Take Thank care. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Do you have time for maybe closing the segment out with harp? Sure can. But let me just read this comment. Yeah. There's a lot of amazing comments, but I'll read this one from Suzanne it said, Thank you for your gentle activations. I have been in many of these temples and feeling the reactivations at this time in this group. Marvelous. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, I leave you with a song. And uh, as I play this for you, I'll also send forth a prayer on this harp music that you'll be open to receive the guidance from your personal angels. We all have like a guardian angel that's wanting to guide us for the to come into contact with our divine self to reunify with our divine self and connect with our our higher our higher self our christ self and that we can have that that soul body fusion with the higher power so i'll just play to that for us have a beautiful rest of your day and i look forward to seeing you sometime in the future
Thank you from my heart to yours. Take care and God bless. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Um, somebody just mentioned in the YouTube that today is dubbed World Peace Day. So great energy to have for, for today's World Peace Day. And uh, just a couple of announcements now. Firstly, I thank you so much to Peter Sterling. Let's just give him a round of applause, etheric round of applause, sending him energy. And Peter will be back on other events in the future and conferences. So I'm going to show you now. We're going to transition into some upcoming events. And then I'm gonna show you the trailer for the Portal to Ascension Conference that is coming up October 1st to 4th. A four day, 44 speakers, four panels, eight MCs, one event. Um, that's gonna be October 1st to the 4th and this is the fifth annual event. So I'm gonna share my screen. And then when we're done today, I'll end with a little poem and we'll close it out. First of all, to everybody on YouTube, please do, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. If you're in the Zoom room right now and you want to join our YouTube, youtube.com slash portal to ascension. We're going live there almost every single day. Tomorrow, I'm interviewing Tarek Bibi, who is a, another speaker and also a hip hop artist, conscious hip hop artist um, and spiritual entrepreneur doing some great things in the world. Tomorrow, I'll be interviewing him. We don't have a Zoom room um, registration for that. So it's just going to be on YouTube. So everybody in the Zoom room, it would be beneficial to subscribe to the YouTube because around 90% of everything isn't sent out through email. We just go live there um, all, almost all the time. Also with Laura Eisenhower next week on Tuesday, same time, uh, but a week from today, I'll be live here with Laura Eisenhower and we'll be doing a panel discussion about an upcoming conference that we're doing together. Sneak peek right here, sneak peek, Activating Conscious Evolution Conference, which will be a two day event, November 1st and 2nd, that you can check out on our website. Firstly, here is our upcoming events page. We have a few great opportunities to interact and be a part of some amazing gatherings, one of which is the Maya online conference, which is part of our ancient civilization series that I am now um, creating and curating that's going to be starting in October. But every single month, every single month for a whole entire year, we're doing another conference on a different ancient civilization, the Indus Valley, the Tartarians, the Egyptians, the Sumerians, Imagine a whole day event with 10 hours of speakers and a panel on each civilization um, going really, really in depth of all the awareness from the spiritual to the physical, to the practical, to the historical context, to the architecture, so much more. So if you're interested in that, check it out on the website. And also around the same time, we're starting our four week, the second four week online course with Alan Steinfeld, which is a remote viewing course. Uh, Russell Targ will be a feature in one of the uh, four weeks. And also JJ and Desiree Hurtak will be there. Of course, the Portal to Ascension Conference that I'm gonna show you in just a second. The Starseed Summit two-day online conference. We're resurrecting that. I haven't done this event for six years. The last one I did was six years ago. The Starseed Summit is coming back. Um, sound relationships in sound relationships and true tantra with Wayne Perry in November, and then Foster Gamble a week after that. So a lot going on. I'm just giving you kind of a quick synopsis right here. You can check them all out online events and scroll yourself. Now I want to go into details a bit about those two of the conferences that are coming up that I'm really excited about. The Maya Civilization Conference again. That is October 10th, 2021, and these are your speakers here. We have one, two, three. We have six speakers and two MCs for this event. And we're also gonna have a panel discussion. I'm gonna be doing a presentation on the architectural styles of the Maya and evidence to suggest that, you know, they didn't vanish, they're still there and they've been there uh, for quite some time. And also interviews and questions, Q and A with Maya descendants, asking them a bunch of questions based on um, what the Western world has kind of dubbed about them. You know, what we have stereotyped them as in regards to the spirituality, and so much more. So tune in for that one. And then here it is, everybody, the four day Portal to Ascension Conference, October 1st to the 4th, 2021. That is only, let's see how far we are from this date. That is only one week and four, one week and three days away. And it's, there's no reason to not sign up. I keep telling everybody that because it's free or by donation. And if you have a reason that you cannot attend live, you get unlimited replay access and there's gonna be so much information. This event is truly a representation and a symbol of unity consciousness coming together. Everybody puts the differences aside, coming together to, to cultivate information, education, 
and empowerment spiritual tools so that we can shift ourselves and then thereby help shift this external reality and create real peace real unity on earth and that is the theme of this event it is the fifth one the fifth annual one next year next year we're going live again back to the live conference so october 2022 we're going to do a live in-person conference with around probably 20 speakers three days at a destination place somewhere in southern california so put that in your calendars right now first weekend october 2022 but for now come and check it out well, there's going to be four panels and here are some of your speakers celestine star sheila seppi again if you're on youtube or if you're about to go on youtube or if you'll be on youtube later go ahead and click subscribe because we're going to be going live every single day on youtube and there's also a zoom room we have four thousand people right now four thousand people registered for this event for the zoom room and then we're going to also go live on um, around three different YouTube channels. So there will be a lot of people there every single day. We're going to do a mass meditation in the morning. Um, so try to at least be there for the morning. If you're able to choose the time to come, try to be there for the morning time when we get started, which is 10 a.m. Pacific, when we can go ahead and do the mass meditation together so we can have as many people focusing their intent on you know the same things, really, which is upliftment of the earth and creating harmony and peace. Right. So some of the speakers here is Dan Winter. You will be there. Barbara Lamb. She's going to be on a panel and also doing her own interview. Lori Spagna, who a lot of people on YouTube have been really enjoying her videos as of late. The Hertex, JJ and Desiree Hertex, William Henry. And I'm just kind of going all over the place here. Foster Gamble is going to be there going into the unified field. Kamora Jones, next level artist. Extremely excited for her. Flo Karuna, Grant Cameron, Mary Rodwell. Michael Tellinger will be giving us an update of the last two years of research on ancient sites that he's been doing in South Africa, plus an update on Ubuntu. And then we have Laura Eisenhower. This individual here, Michael DeMaria, he will be doing a meditation and a native flute ceremony on one of the days, which will be really beautiful. We have music, some sort of musical component every single day. And one of the days as well is Jonathan Goldman one of the og pioneers in the west of sound healing awareness himself he's going to be doing a humming exercise which will be around a 20 to 25 minute humming event where we're basically working on harmonizing the planet earth but instead of using external sounds we're going to be using our own breath and he'll be guiding us through that and then paul heineck who is j allen heineck from project blue book's son he's going to be joining us for a couple of different experiences your mcs your host myself Alan Steinfeld, Shreya Dharma, Joan of Angels, Rob Yox from Full Spectrum Universe, Michelle Anderson, Omar I Am One from Watchers Talk TV, and then we have Brendan Cullerton, who I just got interviewed by uh, from Paradigm Shift Central. He will also be there too. So it's going to be a party online, everybody. Please join us. If you have attended any of our epic multi-day events before, you know how fun they are. The schedule is also on the website right here. So um, check it out, ascensionconference.com or go to portal to ascension click online events and then go ahead and scroll down to the event okay i am excited for this gathering all right so now i'm going to show you we're almost done here i'm going to show you a trailer for this conference and then let you know about a live event that is currently going on on portal to ascension actually let's do the live event on portal to ascension first you can see right here here's my youtube page we have this event, Together We Ascend Virtual Summit. 33 speakers over four days. We're on day two right now. If you wanna go ahead and tune in after this, you can see you're probably one of the individuals watching this event. If you wanna go ahead and leave that and just go to our channel and start tuning into this one, please go ahead and do so. Um, this is another epic event with like some revolutionary minds and a lot of new people that you probably haven't heard of covering everything from plant medicine to spiritual tools to cryptocurrency. Uh, practical awareness, esoteric awareness, and that's going on for the next four days. When this is over, I am hooked up with WisdomCon for Saturday and Sunday. We're going to be going live for around 10 hours a day on Saturday and Sunday with WisdomCon. I am presenting on this conference tomorrow. I'll be presenting on WisdomCon on Sunday, so I'll be a part of it too. But basically, for the next six days, there's around a 10-hour event every single day up until beginning of next week. Then we go on a little pause for a few days, and then we go for four days live for Portal to Ascension Conference with 10 hours a day. So that's that's a lot of information in a very short period of time. All right, here we are. I am now going to show you 
the trailer to the Portal to Ascension conference. And then after this, I shall do a poem and we will call it a day. Here we go. Again, this is free or by donation. So go ahead, sign up at ascensionconference.com. Hope to see some of you there. All right, everybody. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for being with me today. Again, we're going live tomorrow, live tomorrow. And in the next two weeks before the conference, we're going to be doing a lot of lives to just talk about the conference, bringing on different speakers, interviewing them. So you're going to get some insight and in-depth knowledge on specific speakers from the Star Seed Summit and from the Portal to Ascension Conference just in the next 10 to 14 days. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe, click the notification bell if you want to get more information. So now I am doing a poem. This poem here I'm going to do is going to is called is Road to Zion. And I'll do two poems back to back. Usually when I do poetry, it's spoken word, which is slam poetry. So it's really fast. So I'm going to try something different and really do it slowly this time and just enunciate each component more like a meditative experience rather than spoken word piece. So here we go. This is called Road to Zion. In this world of calamity, with organized piety making people drop to their knees. We be the free, people see right in front. Time for the peripheral narrow-minded ignorance. Be the bigger man and see the benevolence. The interdimensional energy of love holds my truth above other dimensions. I'm the anti-level vacuum being sucked down with the pull of a black hole, recycled in this universe that shows acceptance. Knows acceptance by accepting the predicament that I am in. With all the government makes me think I do is all I do is a sin. Straight fear mongering. So I write with a pen to show a beginning to an end. Just know we chose to be here. Tear perceptions of fear. I remember Ja will be waiting there. It's time to believe in yourself. To forget monetary wealth. To concentrate on your health. I felt lost, stones pelt, body bloody, judgment by those who say they love me. But what does love mean within these lower frequencies of emotions, causing mental erosions? I'm frozen in a rapidly moving time with holes in the heavens, flow of energy from realms of divine essence. These beings, they think that we're under their guide to receive lessons of ascension? No. The gods we show, the biblical portrayal of Jesus in pagan rituals, the deities who we worship and bow, ask for forgiveness and how can we reach the kingdom of heaven? Away from ourselves. Looking externally for personified God, indemnified soul of the old ancestry of the duality of friends and foes. Know this, the energy level will persist. The new world order doesn't matter one bit. No one world without singularity. Physical perceptions manifest in realms of spirituality. No order, pure anarchy to set all of humanity in 13 different third dimensional planetary systems free. So follow me and we will all transcend and ascend to the fourth density. And this last one, this last poem here is called Atlantis. If you guys are interested in following any of my spoken word pieces, I'm at youtube.com slash MC resonance, youtube.com slash MC resonance. And I go around the world and film myself at ancient sites, recording and um, performing spoken words. So you can see me at different pyramids in the Yucatan and even in Peru on, on that page, youtube.com slash, slash MC resonance.
Let me ask you one thing. Are we one yet? Going back to source. No remorse when reinforce the course that we all endorse. Unconditional love. It's the highest vibration a gift from above. Desolation of separation. We must be the ones to say this is enough. You see the third dimension? It was meant to be tough. There is no captivity, so unlock the cuffs. Move away from hate and begin to trust. No more anger and lust. Our thought shifts the earth's crust into a straight axis. Just like in Atlantis, stop causing damage and learn to manage self-realization. When people start to vanish, we change our intentions and join the like-minded souls in the fifth dimension. This is the beginning of our oversoul mission. What is it that you envision for the future incarnations? The Christ consciousness has arisen. Tear the perception of being in a prison. This industrial system, slumber of opposites. Duality, where we get lost and forget how to achieve liberation. The curiosity won't last for long at all. As you move to the aquatic age, break free from the third dimensional cage of limitations, Freemasons being displaced in this illusionary reality. Governing authorities, there will be no more war. Co-create a love ambassador, open the doors. Life isn't supposed to be a chore. No getting on your knees, worshiping entities from the floor. The message is simple, we don't need to know anymore. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. Thank you, everybody. Love you all. Have a great day. Bye. See you.